Hello and welcome to the Nature Photography Show. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the basic panel in Lightroom Classic. So here we are in Lightroom. And this image is one that I took in Dinner Island Ranch in Florida, and this is the raw, unedited file. So you look down here, it says copy one, that's because I created a virtual copy from it, and then make sure to reset it so that it's completely blank. This is how it came in from the camera. And the basic panel, as the name would suggest, is the basics that you would do to an image. And this is stuff that I do probably first for every image that I bring into Lightroom and take a look at. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go through this image, and I'm gonna show you each little section of the basic panel and how I would use it to change this image. And when we're done, it will look drastically different than what you see right now, and that is just from the basic panel. So let's get started. Up here at the top, you'll notice there's library, develop, map, print. You might have a few others up there, but we're looking to go into the develop module. So make sure you click the develop module, find an image you wanna work on, and then you can go over here to the right and you'll see basic. Now the very first options we have are color and black and white. This is where you can just decide if you want color or black and white. You can also create virtual copies and you can do one in color, one in black and white. There's all kinds of things you can do here. But for this image, we're gonna do just color. I've got a nice black and white version of it, but for today, we're gonna stay in color. So then you move on down, you've got your color profiles. This, these are profiles that are built in where you can change whatever you happen to want to change here. We're going to leave it on Adobe Landscape, but a lot of times I'll use Adobe Color, but we'll, we'll do just landscapes today, Adobe Landscape. So you can cycle through those and see which ones you like. Next, we have our white balance. I shoot on auto white balance almost all the time unless it is lighting that never changes, like in a hockey rink, for example. I would, I would know where to put it as far as the white balance and I would just keep it there through the entire shoot, that kind of stuff. But most of the time, the auto white balance does amazing. But if you're shooting in raw and you should be shooting in raw, this is one of the best options or the, the best things that you've got access to in the basic panel. Now I, I say that you should, well, you should be shooting in raw, but there, there is a use case for JPEGs if you happen to be a sports shooter and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, if you want to leave me nasty comments because I said shooting raw, then that's fine too. The more the merrier actually. But anyway, back, back to what we're talking about here. Here's where you can change the white balance to whatever you want. So you can even do tungsten if you want to do something really strange. But because it's a raw file, you have the full access to the white balance and you can change it to whatever you want it to be, including going into the custom right here and just changing it however you want it to be. Now, one of the cool features of Lightroom, just double click and it'll reset, it'll reset everything. Now we're back to as shot. But let's say on this image, we wanna warm it up just a little bit. So you could just grab the, the slider here under temperature and warm it up just a little. So you can see the difference there. It's not a big difference, it's a subtle difference, but we'll take it to start with. And you can play around with the tint if you want to, and depending on what you're looking for, there's reasons that you could do that. But we're just gonna warm it up a little bit here and we're gonna move on. So exposure is as it sounds, it's the exposure of the image. And you can see it bright and dark, and you can see there's a lot of leeway here in this image which is great. That means you've got a lot of data and a lot of information to work with. If you look up here, the way that uh, the histogram is, most of it's in the middle. I would like to have had it a little bit more to the right, but I, on this particular image, I didn't do that. So we're actually gonna brighten it up just a little bit right there. You gotta watch those highlights, watch the skies. Let's make sure we're not gonna blow those out too much. And in a later video, I may take this image further and we'll show you how to use the brush tool and how we can burn and dodge little different places to, to give different views of, of the image, to bring out more of the image. But right now we're sticking with just the basics. So we're gonna bring up the exposure just a little bit right there. And contrast, there's a different way to add contrast and I'll show you how I do it, but here's here you can add some contrast or take it away depending on what you want. This image to me, I wanted a little bit more contrast with it, but I'm gonna leave it at zero because I'll show you what I do to 
to find some contrast. But you may have use for this slider. I use it quite a bit on black and white, actually. Uh, but we'll move on to the highlights. Now, the highlights are, if you're looking up here at the histogram, it's pretty much going to be stuff that's right here. See where it says highlights? That's what we're looking at. And when I move this slider, you'll see this change. So we'll check highlights, see what's going on there. It's only affecting the highlights, though. It's not affecting anything else. So let's say you bring up that exposure to get the foreground the way you want it, but it seems really bright in here. Well, now you can go down to highlights if you want, and you can bring some of that back. And you can see that little subtle change right there. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring some of that back. Shadows, as you can see, are the lights and shadows, or the, the shadows of the image where you can brighten them, darken them, however you want. In this case, I'm actually going to darken them because I want a little bit more contrast in this foreground. And now the whites are right here. You'll be able to see those. And here is where I add my contrast most often. And you can do it by holding down Option on Mac or Alt on PC. And it turns the screen black. See that? And now you can raise and lower the whites. And the way I typically do it is you'll see those bleed in. That means you're losing data. So we're not going to want to lose any data. So I'll go until I see the white, and then I'll back it off a little bit. And then we'll check our image. And you can see that quite a bit got brighter. And I love the feel of what we're doing right now in this image. So now to add the contrast, you're going to take the blacks and you're going to darken them. But you're going to do it in the same way. And here we are. We're going to keep moving it to the left in this case. And sometimes with blacks, if I, once I see that, I see it start creeping in. I'll actually go a little bit further. I don't mind clipping the black some, but that's just a personal preference. And then you can look at it and kind of eyeball it and see which one you like. So I kind of like it maybe about right there. And that's how I'll add a little bit of contrast. So now we're going to move on to the next section, which is your presence, your textures, your clarity, your dehaze, your vibrance, and your saturation. Texture is just that. You're adding grit, I guess, is a good way to look at it. Adding a little bit of texture to the image. I rarely, if ever, use this uh, for the, the kind of photography that I do. I don't usually like to add or, or do anything like that to texture. But we can zoom in here a little bit if you want. And we can take a look and see what texture does. See, it adds and then it takes away. So I, I just, uh, that's not not a part of this that I care to do. I, I just leave it like, like this at zero. Maybe we can mess around with it a little bit, but whatever your taste is for your photography, that's what texture does. Clarity, I consider, uh, it, it's like a contrast, but it's like an edge contrast. So you can see that it does some pretty amazing things, but you can also overdo clarity pretty quick if you're not careful and then you get all kinds of crunchy images if you like crunchy that's how you get crunchy so for clarity we're going to go back and we're going to just give a little bit right there because i would prefer to add clarity and stuff like that using a brush but we're just talking about the basic panel dehaze is intended for exactly what it says dehaze so if you've got a scene where there's a lot of haze you can use dehaze to get rid of it now it's also, I, I consider it almost like a clarity on steroids. So here you can see it does some crazy stuff very, very quickly. So use it sparingly, but you will find a use for it. I find a use for it in a lot of my images. Like this one for sure is going to get a little bit. Vibrance. So vibrance takes those colors that are not overly saturated and it brings them up a little bit so with clarity I actually add quite a bit so we're gonna add and this one will do around 20 or so it doesn't look like much of a change but watch that watch the greens especially in the grass see there's quite a bit of a change but it's only in the greens and I like that in this particular image so we're gonna go to about I don't know maybe 13 or so all right so now we've got the saturation and saturation, much like clarity and dehaze, can be overused quite a bit. So for most of my images, I actually start around five. So saturation will bring out the colors of the entire image. Every color in the image, saturation will affect. But look at the difference 
in this photograph with just the basic panel. There is so much good stuff in Lightroom. And the basic panel is a great starting point. Now in this image, I would go on to the tone curve and I would go to the HSL and I would go to color grading maybe, uh, detail for sure, uh, lens corrections. There's so many other aspects of Lightroom Classic that you can use, but this is just the basic panel. And I think if you find yourself new to Lightroom, spend a lot of time in the basic panel and just play around with all of the sliders because you can always go down to the bottom and hit the reset button and start over because this doesn't damage your photo at all. All it does is put information in a sidecar file that is hidden and attached to this image so that it will tell the computer how to manipulate the image based on what you have input. So mess around with it. You're never going to break an image because you can always just go reset. Now let's look at where this started. Look at that. What a difference just a few moments made for this image. Look at that before and after before and after. And like I said, just a few moments right here in the basic panel. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video on using the basic panel for Lightroom Classic. Let me know in the comments below what you think, what you liked, what you didn't like. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell, that way you get notified whenever I put new content out. And as always, grab your camera, get off the couch, escape, explore, and create.